Nia was able to get some traction recently before it was crushed by the bear market like all other cryptocurrencies too. How good are Nia's fundamentals and the tech behind it? Should you buy now or should you leave it alone? Hello and welcome to Finance with Axel. Before we start with the Nia analysis, keep in mind that I am not a financial advisor and that you should never blindly trust a random dude on the internet. Near Protocol was founded by three people. Eric Troutman, an entrepreneur with experience on Wall Street. His co-founders are Ilya Polosukun, who has more than 10 years of industry experience, including three years at Google, and Alexander Skidanov a computer scientist that worked at Microsoft. Nia Protocol has an extensive team of experienced developers that includes several international programming contest winners. The team looks amazing, to be honest. It is important to have people behind the project who can also implement the vision in software engineering terms. Development is coordinated by the NIA Foundation, a non-profit in Switzerland. NIA in total raised hundreds of millions, but only a fraction of it in the ICO. Post-ICO raise was at least gigantic 500 million that makes NIA one of the best funded projects after the initial ICO. This shows that they got a lot of institutional adoption, meaning that the big players and the so-called smart guys believe in the project, which is always a green flag when considering an investment. Their list of investors reads like the who is who of blockchain venture capitalists. They, for example, got backing from Three Arrows Capital and Almada to just name two. NIA uses its nightshade technology to achieve high transaction throughput and scalability. Nightshade is a variation of sharding in which validators process transactions in parallel across multiple shards, improving the overall capacity of the blockchain massively. Sharding allows each participating node to only store a small subset of the platform's data. Sharding allows the blockchain to scale more efficiently. This is strong tech. They are where Ethereum wants to be already, as Ethereum also plans to use sharding to scale, but the update isn't implemented yet. The consensus mechanism used is delegated proof of stake. They call it Doomslug. Doomslug is a variation of proof of stake. It is based on two rounds of consensus. A block is considered final as soon as it has received the first communication round. This allows for near instant finality by having validators take turns producing blocks rather than competing directly based on their stake. You can either stake tokens and become a validator, which requires a lot of technical knowledge and a huge minimum stake to secure the network and earn staking rewards. Or alternatively, you can also participate by delegating your NIA to one of the existing validators. Here, no minimum stake is required. I also really like the staking design as we don't have week-long unbounding periods like in other protocols. On NIA, it just takes one to two days to unbound while it takes weeks on Polkadot and on Cosmos, for example. The current TPS is around 4,000 with only four shards yet, but it should be around 100,000 and finally infinite scaling when all the phases of the sharding roadmap are completed. Chunk only producers are coming in September 2022 and are expected to boost scalability a lot. Transactions are very cheap and finality is also reached nearly instant. The native token is called NIA and it's used to first pay for fees, second to secure the network through staking, third for governance and fourth 
for storing data on chain. The NIA protocol has a fixed inflation of 5% of which 90% goes to the validators and 10% to the protocol treasury. 100% of the fees are burned unless a smart contract is involved. In this case, 70% of the fees are burned and 30% go to the app which generated the fee. This is super nice as incentives are directly built into the protocol level. The 5% constant inflation isn't even that bad because the fee burn has a deflationary effect if the protocol is used a lot and many transactions take place there will be only a very small inflation or even deflation it seems that nia always has the user and developer in mind very positive for users is that first they added metamask support recently second a cool feature of NIA is that they have human readable account names unlike cryptographic addresses common in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Third, they got a very convenient wallet in which you can stake directly, for example. Developers are having the following advantages. First, EVM compatibility. A project called Aurora built the Ethereum virtual machine on NIA making it very easy for developers to port over and run Ethereum apps on Nier with lower fees and more speed. Second, the main programming language is Rust still, which could help them since Rust is also used in non-blockchaining programming and thus potentially a larger developer pool is available. Third, Nier also provides modular components helping software engineers starting projects like token contracts or NFTs more quickly. In addition to that, they also have an astonishing 800 million development fund to foster adoption. This is one of the reasons why their ecosystem is thriving. They got DeFi, NFTs, DAOs and gaming on their platform. Very important for DeFi is that they also got a bridge called the Rainbow Bridge that allows participants to easily transfer Ethereum tokens back and forth between Ethereum and NIA. NIA is also great on the interoperability front. There is the so-called Octopus Network. Quote, Octopus provides out-of-the-box security, interoperability and on-chain governance to projects looking to create a specific chain for their application. Projects can run so-called app chains on the NIA protocol. This is similar to Polkadot's parachains or Cosmos with its IBC chains. Recently, NIA also launched NIA Pay. It seems like this is a response to Solana Pay. These products seem very similar. Difference seems to be that NeoPay comes with a physical card and apparently it is already available in many countries. So far, I have addressed almost exclusively good things about the project. I will now talk about the cons. It's one of the most complex projects and has hundreds of pages explaining how everything works in its documentation. Some might deem a very complex system as good, but it is also deterring programmers and users if it's overwhelming at first. They also lag behind in some key metrics. First, TVL, or Total Value Locked, is still very low, but at least dropped less than in other protocols in the recent bear market. It's also important that you don't only look into Nia's TVL, but also the one of Aurora. Unfortunately, this doesn't help too much either. TVL is still low compared to other. Phantom, for example, is worth way less in terms of market capitalization, but has more total value locked. Second, they also have comparable little number of transactions. This could be because of missing retail interest. In my humble opinion, they got insanely bad marketing. 
then you go to the website, you only find lengthy texts that say nothing at all. If you are like me and just want to get a quick overview over the project, this is simply not possible. Many of the explanations and texts on the website do not get to the point or are completely meaningless. Often you read 10 minutes and you know nothing more than before. The bigger picture is not well explained at all. This could be because they try to do everything in a decentralized manner. This definitely works very poorly for marketing. They got so-called guilds. A guild is a community that make up the greater near community. Each guild shares a specific vision and mission, like for example marketing. I tried to get into contact with their marketing guild just for fun. Um, the website was broken and the Telegram contact unresponsive. According to their website, they want to be very decentral in the end. Everything should be managed via DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. I like that. Unfortunately, currently everything is extremely centralized nevertheless. The NIA Foundation puts the project in an extremely vulnerable position as very few have the say over the funds and development. It's not decentralized at all. The board is made up of a few people, founding members of the team. Why the fuck is a community governed system giving all the power to only a handful of people? It also seems like they are in no rush to become decentral soon. There is no meaningful information to be found about decentralization plans. What makes things even worse is the lack of transparency. There are no transparency reports. It's completely unclear which wallets belong to the foundation and how the development fund is used, for example. There is also no information about the team on the website anymore. At least we got an ambitious roadmap published. Speaking about centralization, their chain is extremely centralized. At the moment, there are only 100 validators. This is the maximum number at the moment and the barrier to entry are extremely high. You need first good hardware to run a node, but what is even worse, second, a very high minimum stake to become a validator is set. At today's price is more than $500,000 worth of NIA tokens. Keep in mind that we are in a bear market with a lot of blood in the streets. This price is already comparably cheap. At the all-time highs, the minimum stake to run a validator came at a much more hefty price in the millions of dollars. It's getting even worse. The top 7 validators hold almost 37% of the stake. This is enough stake in the hands of just 7 people to attack the network if they decide to collaborate. The initial tokenomics in the ICO also can and should be criticized very strongly. The team, insiders and the foundation secured 60% of the tokens for themselves. To make matters worse, investors in the previous private sale rounds received much better prices than the ICO participants. Prices range from 3.75 cents in the earliest private sale round up to 40 cents in the ICO. Personally, I have no problem with the fact that investors who invested two years earlier than the risk was significantly higher get a better price. However, a tenfold higher price seems excessive. Some tokens are also still vesting. When they come available, this might cause constant sell pressure. Another huge issue is the intense competition from other smart contract platforms. We need to name Solana in particular here. As they are quite similar and both need developers who can program in Rust programming language. 
Solana is also in the process of releasing EVM compatibility. This could intensify competition even more. Hard to project which of the two will win the competition over capital, developers and users in the long run. Maybe it's even room for both, which could be the case with growing crypto adoption, but this remains to be seen. There is also another huge elephant in the room, namely the stablecoin USN. This is the NIA protocol's native algorithmic stablecoin. They call it semi-algorithmic as it has collateral too. It partly uses the Terra Luna stabilization mechanism. They did a few changes to make it more crisis safe. That's why I deem it more secure than Terra, but it still can lead to a death spiral for both USN and the NIA token. I already explained how the Terra mechanism works. Check out my older videos if you are curious about this. I will only discuss the changes made and if they help to secure the pack long term. The central bank is the DAO to manage the USD packed stablecoin. Again, we got extreme transparency from near side. Many information are not published or hold back. I also ask in Discord without receiving any answers. Discussing USN is outside of the scope of this video, but I found many red flags already. In transparency, as already mentioned, and a death spiral is also still possible. At least a death spiral is less likely and less severe as in the case of Terra Luna. This is because a similar stabilization mechanism is used as in the case of Terra Luna, but if USN is minted or burned, no near gets destroyed or minted. Instead, it puts it in the protocol's treasury or released it from it. So, there is no infinite token minting to secure the pack. It still can cause a death spiral once arbitrageurs get to work, but it will not be as detrimental as in the case of Terra Luna. The whole system is self-reinforcing. In the bull market, it leads to the near supply being scarcer than without the stablecoin, therefore allowing the price to increase more than without USN. And in the bear market, it leads to a potential under collateralization and a potential death spiral that hurts the near price more than without the stablecoin. This native stablecoin is definitely a red flag for me as information are hold back and the white paper is poorly made. I found obvious mistakes in it after briefly looking through it. The stabilization mechanism is also not great and partly copied from Luna. I will look even deeper in USN in my next video, but the topic is too extensive to put it in this video too. That's all I got for Nier. Based on the pros and cons presented, you should be able to form your own opinion. Very important, never blindly trust a stranger from the internet. Always do your own research to and verify the heard information. I personally think that Nier is an interesting project, but I am not invested at this moment. However, this was a close call before I make a final decision, I need to learn a little bit more about near stablecoin USN. Unfortunately, the information regarding USN is very thin and on their Discord I have not yet received any answers. What do you think about near? Invest or better not? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye until next time. Take care.